Question? Yeah. You okay with it? She's surprised. She's She's shaking her head. <laughs> she doesn't want to go on. She wants to waste the last five minutes of play. I know you have. Shoot, we got seven minutes left. A lot of y'all coming two minutes late. I'm going to spend two minutes, two minutes extra. You're going to get your 50 minutes worth, I guarantee that. <laughs> Let's see if we are maybe even going to be close to adding these things together. First thing you check for is the root. Okay, that, that might save you a lot of time. You're going to have some fun regardless, but at least you'll be able to know whether you might be able to add these together or not. Uh, is the root satisfied at least? Yeah, yes. now, we have the cube root everywhere. That's great. Don't lose that three when working down. Now, the next thing, of course, our radicands are not even close to the same, so we're going to have to simplify these things first. Let's start with, let's start with the easy one. Can you simplify this one? No. Don't, please don't ever tell me that's one, okay? That's, that's the only numbers that we can simplify in a cube are 8 and 27, 64, 125, and so on. So here, I know for sure I'm going to have a plus cube root of 3. Let's work on this cube root of 24 next. Cube root of 24, can you think of a perfect cube that goes into 24? Eight. Yeah, remember, we're dealing with cubes, right? The only numbers you can try are 8, 27, 64, and two of those are bigger. So only 8 would help us here. I know it's 8 times 3. Minus 4 and then a cube, oh my gosh, 192. But remember, there's only a couple numbers you can even check. You can check 8. You can check 27. You can check 64. Start with the big ones. Start with 64. Does 64 work? No. Okay, try 27 then. Does 27 work? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Divide it. You get calculators. I don't. 64. Okay, 64 does work. I thought it did. You scared me. What, times three? Yes. All right. So we break that up to 64 times three. It's kind of nice with the cubes, right? Because there's only a few of them you can check. If it's not 827, 64, or 125, well, you're done. It's kind of nice. So we're going to break that up. We got it. Now we simplify. Just be careful. Don't lose anything here. Don't lose your 4. Don't lose your cube root. What's the cube root of 8, ladies and gentlemen? 2. So I'm going to have 2 cube root 3. Because there's nothing to do with that 3. Minus don't lose the 4. The 4 is going to be there regardless. Cube root of 8. Can, or, sorry, cube root of 64. Four. What is it, 8 or 4? Four? 4. four. 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 It is four. Yeah. <laughs> I said eight because I saw that. I don't know why. But yeah, that, that's definitely four. It's four times four times four gives you 64. So cube root 64 is four. And I have a cube root of three still inside of my radical. Plus I've got this cube root of three out here at the back end. We're going to clean this up just a little bit. Multiply anything that you can before you start combining your roots. So I know two cube root of three. That's good to go. Minus, this gives you how much? 16. Good. 4 times 4 is 16. Cube root of 3 plus cube root 3. Can we add all of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. We've got the same exact root, same exact radical, so yeah, we can. I don't know what we're going to get. Well, we can do this two at a time if you'd like. We've got 2 minus 16. Wait a minute. How much is this over here? 1. one. one. Don't forget that that's a 1. Okay, this actually counts. There's like a little one out front. We don't show it, but this is like having a single x. If you have a single x, it still counts for one x, doesn't it? So don't forget about this thing. If you did these two, sure, you're going to get negative 14 cube root of 3 plus cube root of 3. That's from here. Negative 14, no problem. But now that you have negative 14 plus 1 cube root of 3, you're going to get negative how much? 13. 13. Very good. So don't let this thing fool you, just because right there that still counts. You still have to add or subtract one depending on whether you have plus or minus. Let's try one more today and then we will be done. We'll start on this next time.
Now, we haven't had any variables yet. Well, except for the first one was already kind of done for us, it was already simplified. But we can still simplify them the same way we would before. So if the power is bigger than the root, we can simplify it. If it's not, then we, we can't as far as the variable goes. The numbers will do the same exact way. So when we look at this thing, we've got square root, square root, square root. The roots are satisfied. We've got 20x, 16x, 45x. The radicands aren't. We need to simplify those first. So when we look at the 20x, can you tell me what number I'm looking at for 20, please, quickly? 5 and 4, or 4 and 5. Okay, so 4 times 5x. I'm looking for 4 because it's a perfect square now. I'm looking for squares. Minus 6 times, okay, the 16. That's already a perfect square. I'm going to leave that to the next step. 16x is great. Plus, how about the 45? What goes into 45? 9 and 5. Great. Square 9 times 5x. Raise your hand if you with me so far on this. Okay, let's simplify. Can you all stick with me here? What's the square root of 4? 2. Do you agree I'm going to get 2 root 5x out of that? Yes. Okay, minus 6. What's the square root of 16? 4. Watch carefully, please. We're going to have times 4. Then I have a square. What's inside the square root? X. X. Good. You okay with that? That's 4 root X? Okay. Lastly, I've got plus. This is going to give you 3 square root of 5x again. Let's do one more step, multiply what we can, 2 root 5x minus 24 root x, remember we're multiplying 24, plus 3 root 5x. Why can we only combine two of these? What's wrong? Okay. While we do have square roots everywhere, this one worked out to be a square root of x. This was a square root of 5x, this was a square root of 5x. So just like we had in the opening of this problem, you can only combine like terms. You can only combine like radicals. So we have a 2 root 5x. We've got a 3 root 5x. How many root 5x do I have? 5 root 5x. 5. That takes care of these ones. Then at the back end, I still have a minus 24 root x. Hey, one question. Can I combine these and get like a negative 19 square root of 4x? Nope. No, you can't. You can't do that with like terms. You can't do it with like radicals. This is as much as we can do. How many people feel pretty good about what we talked about so far? All right, good. We're talking still about how to add, subtract, and we're going to get to how to multiply some radical expressions. We're dealing with stuff like this. Something like the cube root of 8y to the fifth plus the cube root of 27y to the fifth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're trying to add roots, what do we have to look for in order to determine that we can actually add these things? Okay, you've got to have the same root. Very good. Someone else tell me what else do you have to have? Right, radicand, and that's like a base. What we're doing is we're, we're very much like combining like terms because these things technically are like terms. They have an exponent. Remember, a root is an exponent and they have a base, or in our case, a radicand. So we really are trying to combine like terms. What do we have to do first, though, before we start trying to combine them? Firstly, are these combinable the way they are? No. no. Well, why not? We have the same root. Radicands. No. Oh, the radicands are different. You must have the same root and the same radicand. We talked about that yesterday. So the first thing we need to do before we start combining that is check to see what? Simplify. Let's simplify. Why don't you go ahead and do that right now? Let's simplify those two roots. We should know exactly how to do that.
if you finish that one quickly, if you simplify that quickly, uh, well, we're going to put together. But then we're going to start these two problems too. So if you're already done, maybe start those right now. Okay, so looking at the example and having to simplify, we're dealing with what type of root here? Cube. So we're going to look for perfect cubes inside of that. That's how we simplify. We've been doing this now for about, what, three or four sections. So we should be pretty good at this. We're looking for perfect cubes inside of my root because we have a cube root. Well, first of all, I know that 8 is a perfect cube. That's great. So I don't have to change 8 at all because I know the cube root of 8 is 2. That's fantastic. I don't have to break that number up. So I'm going to leave that as an 8. However, why to the fifth the power is bigger than the root? And we know that any time the power is bigger than the root, I can simplify that. How am I going to write y to the fifth so that I can simplify it, folks? Y, 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 y times? Y, 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 y. Perfect. That's exactly right. Same situation over here. 27 is a perfect cube. I know the cube root of that is 3. That's great. I don't have to change 27. However, the y to the fifth, yeah, I need to write that as y cubed times y squared as well. Did you make it that far, folks? Now's a good part. We need to cross some stuff out. So when we do this, simplification shouldn't really be the hard part. In fact, it, th this is a combination of two ideas we know how to do already. We know how to combine like terms. We know how to simplify. We're just doing it now at the same time. Cube root of 8 gives you 2. Cube root of y cubed gives you y. However, the cube root of y squared, the power is now less than the root. I cannot simplify that anymore. So I've got the cube root of y squared. Give me a head nod if you got that one right. Okay, good. Now next up, I still have this plus. Cube root of 27 gives you 3. Cube root of y cubed gives you y. But then I also have this y squared, so a cube root of y squared. Raise your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. Now, can we combine these radicals? Yeah. We're looking at two places, actually. We're looking not only at the root and the radicand, but we're also looking at this variable. Those variables, that stands for like terms as well, right? So you've got to have the same exact variable to the same power. So here, basically, everything besides your number has to be identical. Everything besides this 2 and this 3 has to be the same. These, this 2 and the 3 stands for our coefficient. We know that these right here are perfectly the same. They're like terms. That means we can combine them. So even if you have some variables up front, if they're still the same, you can still add or subtract those things together. You with me on that? Okay, so how much are we going to get out of this? Okay, and the way you'd say that is 5y cube root of y squared. 5y cube root of y squared. So nothing else changes besides that coefficient. Let's go ahead. I want, to, I want you to try these two on your own. So we're simplifying these roots. Go all the way down. Make sure we can add them together if you can. If you can simplify and add them together, do that. I'll be walking around. If you need help on this, raise your hand let me know. 